Welcome to another edition of Wildcat Country, Eric Cohen and Shane Dale. And yes, if you are reading the description or you've seen what we posted on Twitter, whatever it's called now, X, you know who our big guest is this week. Listen, we're less than two weeks out from the uh, Arizona football season. Head coach Jed Fish had a chance to sit down with Shane and I on Monday. It was a great interview and it will be in the second segment. So stay tuned. Don't fast forward. Listen to us preview the Pac-12, Shane. College football starts this weekend. Can you believe it? It's okay if they fast forward as long as they come back and listen to our wisdom afterwards. I'm okay Fair if you listen to okay. it out of order. but okay, Because uh, we record it out of order sometimes, right? But yeah, it's a little surreal that that, that college football is, is coming back with a week zero. Um, I don't know that's an official term, but it should be. But um, let some other teams suffer before we have to. The last time Arizona played in week zero, I think, was that game at uh, Hawaii that we don't want to talk about. So uh yeah it, it's... If, if every game is going to be like that Shane that Hawaii game mm. I hope Arizona never plays a week zero again yeah uh, well I, if, it, if every game is going to be like their last game that they played which was a territorial cup game I I don't want to go through that four hours of that 12 times a year no thank you well hold on a second I and I I I know that things are different that was nine months ago mm. and I remember Can being you believe it's been nine months ago no. since that game no and I was whining on the podcast oh that was you know what? In hindsight, that win was so great. I mean, it was. Oh, it was the win! The win itself wrenching. was fantastic. It was. It was a great drive home. But the four weeks, or the four weeks, it seemed like four weeks. The four hours leading up to it were 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 pure agony. But I guess all, all, let's all, get, all that ends well. Yep. Let's get right to it. We're going to break down the conference in this week's buy or sell, which is presented by Ice Shaker. Go to icesshaker.com. Use promo code Wildcat Country, capital W, capital C. You can get one of those beauties that you just saw Shane drink out of if you are watching the YouTube stream. Or you can go to fanatics.com and get yourself an ice shaker. And the like half gallon can... jug right back here, too, is awesome. And and mine is hidden. See, I've got, if yeah. I move my head here on the stream, you can see my ice shakers behind me. So quick, there they are. Real, real quick fact. So uh, when they went on Shark, when Chris Gronkowski went on Shark Tank to pitch it, he said, or is it uh, so, uh, Lori Grenier and Barbara Corkin said they should rename it the Gronk Shaker because they had that family tie in. Well, the half gallon jug BC behind me, if you're watching on YouTube or, or X, is the Gronk Shaker because that this is the one that Rob Gronkowski personally requested. And it looks, our logo looks beautiful on this. So so you do that one or, or the one I got in my hand, uh, either one or both. And be like our good friend David who bought one of these uh, the other week. So, and, and Way you to go, David. display it. Yeah, how about that? So we really appreciate that. All right. So here's what we're going to do in buy or sell. I'm going to name a team if you, and I'm going to give you their win total, their projected win total, Shane. Mm-hmm. You buy to the over, you sell to the under. How about that? Okay. Can I just and, say, and can I just push, say, can, just... okay. Can I just say over or under? No, that's fine. Okay. Let's okay. All right. Uh, let's start with USC at 10 wins over or under. I'm going to set a dangerous precedent for this, Eric. I'm going to go with over. Uh, Caleb Williams is back. I think the defense will improve. The offensive line comes together, which I think is the biggest concern on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, I think they're going to be really difficult to stop. You know, the two most likely losses, if you look at their their schedule, are their games at Oregon and at Notre Dame. I think they'll find a way to win at least one of those. I think they'll beat Utah at home. I think they'll beat Washington at home. I think they could go eleven and one, maybe run the table if everything goes right, and then just it, it's one. I think it'll be one of those stories where we're all going to lament the end of the Pac-12 because I think this is going to be a really strong season for the Pac-12 with USC likely at the top. Yeah, I like USC a lot as well, Shane. I'm going 11-1, and so I'm taking the over. I have their only loss at Oregon uh, Mm -hmm. on November 11th. Uh, It's an interesting stretch for them because they play Washington, who I really like, and we'll get to them, uh, the the week before at home. The, The thing about USC, great. They can do all of this, and despite not having a great defense, and then when it comes down to it, you know, come playoff time, are you really going to trust them uh, if they make the college football playoff? Because I'm not. I- I'll no. bait them all day. I just don't trust their defense against the Ohio States or the Georgias of the world. I, I-, no. I- Those teams are just going to eat them alive as far as I'm concerned till proven otherwise. Probably, yeah. But it just I- – I-, I think – Ironically, this is going to be the pac best showing in terms of getting a college football playoff team that we've seen in, in a long time. And it's just going to make everyone even sadder that the conference is dissolving. All right. Next one. How about Utah, Shane? Utah. Uh, the number is eight and a half. Cam Rising status, you know, coming off that yeah. torn ACL in the Rose Bowl. Who knows? 
Eight and a half. I think that's a pretty square number uh, for them. What do you think? That's right. We're probably where they should be. I'm going to lean over on this one as well mm. because they, they do get Kim rising back, even though his health is obviously a concern going into the season. They did lose some top guys uh, to the draft, including Dalton Kincaid. Uh, their secondary is a bit of a concern. Their defensive line looks solid. Uh, Florida and Oregon, those games are going to be tough. Both of those games are going to be at home, though, for Utah. I I don't think they're a Rose Bowl team again, but I think they'll grind their way to, to nine wins one way or the other. I have them losing at Baylor, at Oregon State, at USC, and at Washington. So mm. as far as I'm concerned, uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I see four losses. I am taking the under. I know Kyle yeah. Whittingham usually has a strong team, but they, as you mentioned, Shane, they lost a lot. And I'm just not as bullish on them as, as I have been. I think USC owes them some payback from yeah. what we saw last year. So I'm going to take a slight under there. It's not some, not one I would put a bet on. It's a tough I, one. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a pretty square number. I'm going to take the under there. Let's go to Oregon state and their number is also eight and a half. I'm going to go under with the Beavers just because I don't think they're in a great situation to quarterback uh, DJ. Um, we young Galele. Thank you. Uh, who like was, was just named the starting quarterback uh, before we recorded this. Uh it's a big name. It didn't look great at Clemson. I don't know why it's going to be different in Corvallis. They lost some key guys on defense to the draft and the transfer portal. Their schedule isn't daunting, but I think eight wins is probably their their ceiling this year. Yeah, and that's where I have them, Shane. I'm going to go with under as well. I have them at eight wins as well. I think you know winning on the winning on the road in the conference is is a difficult task. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one upset, you know, they they have an interesting stretch in at the end of October, early November. Uh, after a bye week, they play at Arizona and at Colorado. Mm. Uh, if you win one of those, I think you can hit the over. You know, they also have to play at uh, Washington State, which is tricky, uh, and at Oregon at the end of the year. Uh, I, I see Oregon State starting out hot. Uh, I could see them, you know, going into their bye week six and one, uh, if not better, and then, you know, being ranked in the top 10 and then kind of falling back. Jonathan Smith's done a great job, but this number is oh, just yeah. a little too high for me. I, I can't take the over there at eight and a half. How about Stanford Shane at three, which seems uh pretty low. I yeah, don't know what to make of but you know, I I looked at their schedule, Eric, and trying to find three wins, and I don't know if I can find them. You know, they host Cal, which could be a win. Uh they host Arizona, which could be a win, even though it's a game Arizona should win. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At, at Colorado, maybe, and that's I, that's about it. You know, Stanford's kind of where Arizona was a couple of years ago with a new head coach, a lot of unproven talent, including a quarterback. Uh, it's it's tough to pick. I, I understand what you're saying. It's tough to pick a power five team to win fewer than three games. Uh, and I probably put it a push if I had to. But if I have to go with one or the other, I'm going to go with the under because I. You, I, I you can take a reason, push. You can yeah. take a push. Well, yeah. I, I'll I'll be bold because you, like, okay. you like bold picks. I do like bold picks. I, I will. Yeah. I'll put it this way. I think two is more likely than four, but I think okay. three is right about where they should be. Yeah. yeah, I have them at three right now. I, I have them going one and eight in the conference uh, with their only win, a home win over UCLA uh, in October. Oh, really? I mean, I think I think Arizona goes on the road there and wins that game in September. Mm-hmm. And I think Stanford loses uh, their last five games after they beat UCLA. It's going to be a rough year uh, down on the farm. And who knows what conference they're going to be in. Is it the ACC? Is it independent? Is it probably not the Mountain West? But I think three wins, uh, ouch. Uh, So I will take a push on that one. So here's an interesting one, Shane. Colorado is three and a half. Um, You know, I I, I don't like Dion that much, but where do you go with this number? Yeah, it's a who knows situation, really, because I I think the Buffs are going to be better this year, which is a low bar. But their schedule is brutal. They start the season at TCU. They they host Nebraska. They have to go to uh, Oregon and Utah. Uh, they have to travel to Washington State in mid-November, which is never a fun trip that time of year. Uh, I I think Deion Sanders will experience a bit of success at Colorado at some point, even though I think we both agree his time there is going to be limited one way or the sure. other. But with so many new faces, not to mention the media circus that descended on Boulder and will be there the whole year just because Coach Prime's there. I don't think they're going to put it together right away, so I'm going to take the under, even though I think three and a half, again, is probably right. It, it, it's, like you say, a square number. I think it's right where it should be. Yeah, I'm really uh, not sure what to make of them. I would love to take the under because I will be rooting against Coach Prime and, and Colorado because I don't like his style. But I'm going to go with five wins here, so I'm going to take the over. feel pretty confident about that. And one of those wins I am predicting in November is a home win over Arizona, which I actually mm. have uh, as their last win of the year. I have them beating Oregon State and Arizona in back-to-back weeks at home uh, before they have to go on the road. I, I just think that's a tough spot as this team gets better as the year goes along. You know, but I think the key for hitting this number will be in week two against Nebraska 
at home. Uh, Matt yeah. Rule against Coach Prime. What a what a fascinating mm. uh, coaching matchup. But I'm going to roll with the over there. I feel pretty confident about that one. Uh, I think he the talent is there for what he's brought in. Once they all mesh later in the year, uh, I don't like the timing of when Arizona plays, and I'll put it that way. All right, how about or how about Oregon Shane at nine and a half? Yeah, I already picked USC and Utah to hit the over. So can I? I pick Oregon to do the same. You know, I don't know. They they don't have a tough non conference schedule, but can they win? Say seven of nine in conference. You know they they play both Utah and Washington on the road. They host USC. Uh, they'd have to win at least one of those games, and then run the table in the other games to get to the over. You know, even with Bo Nix back, and I know they added some talented guys on uh, some transfers on defense. I don't see it. I think they're more likely an eight or nine win team than a, a ten or eleven win team. I'm going with uh, with nine and three for Oregon here. And I'll tell you, so it, it's the under, but I'm going to tell you the, the key game for them. And that's in week two against Texas Tech. I'm actually really bullish on Texas Tech this season. Mm. Uh, they have an interesting team. Joey McGuire is doing a good team, doing a good job for them. We'll, we'll see them probably in the coming years. Uh, mm. They might be in Arizona's pod for all that we know. Yeah. Um, but I think that this is a team that in week two, Oregon better watch out on the road. Uh, that's going to be a tricky game. With that said, you know, I have them losing at Washington and at Utah in the conference, but seven and two should be right up there uh, for uh, in for contention for the Pac-12 championship game. But I'm going to play the under nine and a half for them. All right. How about Washington? Same number, nine and a half, Shane. Yeah, I really like Washington this year. Uh, Michael Penix is, in my opinion, right behind Caleb Williams and just right behind him as the best quarterback in the conference. Uh, and both of his top receivers are back. They both gained over a thousand yards last year they have one of the best pass rushers in the country they added a lot of talent in the secondary via the transfer portal most of their tougher games are at home even though they do have to travel to michigan state in a few weeks which should be interesting Mm. interesting early test they'd have a problem with them in seattle last year but uh we'll see what happens uh, when they have to go on the road but i think i think usc and washington are going to meet in the pac-12 championship game with a possible trip to the possible trip to the college football playoff on the line um, so yeah. I'm going to take the over for the, uh, for the Huskies. I think they win at least 10 games. Well, it was announced today, Shane, that Cameron Davis, uh, their running back who scored 13 touchdowns last season out, out for the season, yeah. the lower body injury, but I also have him at 10 and two, uh, seven and two in conference. Uh, I am, you know, big on them as well. You and I in full agreement. And I think you're looking at a team that very well could be ranked in the top five going into November, a tough, uh, late season schedule, uh, there, who knows what to make of, of everything when it comes to uh, Washington and and whatnot, they have to go at USC, uh, home Utah, at Oregon State, and then Washington State at home. I mean that is tricky uh, mm-hmm. right there. But I think they go ten and two. I really am big on Michael Penix, and I think he's going to be invited to New York uh, as a Heisman Trophy finalist. So uh, I, I don't know. You know, maybe we'll make some picks next week on that. But I think Penix has a pretty good shot. It's going to put up a huge numbers. I think. I think another a 40 touchdown or plus season is likely for him. How about Cal at five wins? Uh, Cal should win two non-conference games to look at their schedule, but can they win four Pac-12 games to, to hit the over? Outside of hosting ASU and their game at Stanford, they're probably going to be underdogs in every conference game. You know, they have a new offensive coordinator, a new inexperienced quarterback. They do have some talent returning on defense, and Brett Johnson can actually play because he doesn't think he's played in two years. He'll be a big help on the defensive line, but I have a hard time seeing them piece five wins together in a really tough conference this year. So at, at best I take a push at five wins, but I'd have to say uh, the under if I had to choose. And that's where I have it. Shane is a push uh, five and seven with three and six in conference. I think the schedule, as you said, just not very generous to them, you know, uh, late, late season games at USC at Oregon in consecutive weeks. I mean, or they play, excuse me, they play uh, USC at home then at Oregon uh, Washington State at home at, at Stanford, they should win that. And then at UCLA to close out uh, likely their Pac-12 uh, career. Uh, yeah. So it should be an interesting game. Uh, with that said, I, I'm not bullish on Cal. I don't see them making a bowl game. They, I have them ninth in the conference uh, tied with Colorado. So not uh, not optimistic on their chances. I think, But I think that number at five is a square number and I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. But Washington State with six and a half, is there uh, some value there, Shane, one way or the other? What do you think? Yeah, Washington State reaching the over, in my opinion, will largely come down to their home game against Wisconsin. If they can find a way to win that game, it'll be hard to pick against them to do that, right? You know, they they get Cam Ward back. They got some questions in the running game and on the offensive line. 
Uh, they also lost two of their best pass rushers. I'm still leaning toward the over because they they do avoid both Utah and USC in conference play. Um, and I think they have enough returners, including Cam Ward. But again, it'll likely come down to whether they can go undefeated in the non-conference schedule. Yeah, I don't I don't see them beating Wisconsin. I think there's some a payback angle for last season. I'm going six and six for them. A tough schedule, as you said, you know, yeah. down the stretch at Washington to close. But I think that at Cal game uh, is a tricky one in week 11. That's one I would keep an eye on if they win that. I think they can hit the over if they don't. I'm I will have them at the under. So right now I'm going with them at six and six. All right. The next team, Shane, as we narrow it down here, uh, our 10th team in the Pac-12 that will go through UCLA at eight and a half. And to me, this number looks way, way too high. Yeah, the two games I think will tell the story on whether they can get there uh, or pass that total is are there two games, uh, the games at San Diego State and at Arizona, both of which I think are kind of look like toss ups at this point. I think UCLA has to win both of those in order to get there. Realistically, yep. they, I do agree a, with that. they do avoid Oregon and Washington, but they have to play at Utah and at USC. And I think they're going to lose both of those games. They lost their starting quarterback, their star running back. The offensive line is a question mark. They have a new defensive coordinator. I think UCLA just has a few too many question marks to get to nine wins. So I'm going to take the under. I'm going with six, Shane. I, I don't see this. Maybe I'm underselling Chip Kelly, but I don't see UCLA having a good year at all. I have them losing most of their road games, uh, including at Arizona, uh, you know, at Utah, as you mentioned, at San Diego State, Oregon State's one. Uh, the, the one that I could probably go either way on, and I probably shouldn't have picked it, is at Stanford. But I think, you know, Stanford's got to win some game in the Pac-12, you would think. And I just, I'm not I'm not that big on UCLA this year. Six and six, maybe a minor bowl game for them before they head to the Big Ten. And good luck with that. All right, Shane, uh, ASU is uh, and Arizona are both uh, projected at five wins. Um, let's start with ASU. What do you got? Well, I, I'm a little surprised the number is that high for ASU. And and I, I try, look, I'm, I pride myself on being an anti-homer and like not like, you know, t- shredding the the sun devils just because i can but you know look if the talent they added all comes together quickly they can surpass five wins they added 33 players from the transfer portal alone uh and then they just announced uh jaden rashada as their start their Mm -hmm. freshman as their starting quarterback which was a bit of a surprise considering they brought uh drew pine in from uh from notre dame and then Trenton Borgay looked pretty good last year. I mean, he was yeah. the quarterback on the field in the Territorial Cup game. You're right. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. You know, they they have a pretty good receiving core that they, they do have to uh, replace uh, Validate at uh, a tailback. They practically have a brand new defense, which may or may not be a bad thing. So like Colorado, it's really hard to gauge them. Uh, I'm just going to err on the side of needing a little more time to gel with a whole brand new team, brand new coaching staff. They do not have an easy non-conference schedule. They They, they get both... Oklahoma State and Fresno State that both games at home but both tough opponents Fresno State won what their last seven or eight games last year Oklahoma State's always tough uh if they finish non-conference one and two which is is certainly possible it's hard to see them winning the majority of their Pac-12 games on top of that so I'm going to go with the with the under yeah I'm going with the under there I have them beating Fresno State losing to Oklahoma State but I am at four and eight because I think their last four games uh, at Utah, at UCLA, home Oregon, home Arizona. I am mm-hmm. going 0-4 in those games, and maybe that's overly optimistic. Okay, and, we just you know, got giving, a territorial cup pick for America. I just gave you a t- – well, we're going to talk about you Arizona. You made a – now, okay, no, I'm just going to say, because you made a guarantee last year, and you ca- and, and, and you and you got it right, barely, but you did. I so, did. We'll see. I'm not making a guarantee this year. Okay, all right. Uh, but, uh, and I'll explain why not, but right. uh, I'm going to – uh, take the under for ASU at five wins. Now for Arizona, Shane, I'll start with me on this one, and then I'll let you uh, take us home for this segment. Sure. I have Arizona at six and six. Um, originally, when we did, we went through the schedule. I had five and seven. Here's where I have the wins. I have NAU. I think Mississippi State. They show respectably, but I don't think they win that game. I think they win at UTEP and they win at Stanford. I, I don't know what to expect with the Washington game there uh, at home. I think there is upset potential there but I'm not picking it. I think uh, they're going to lose at USC. They never went out there and they never went in Pullman. So I think they lose at Washington state. So at that point, going into their bye week they are three and four, they come home to face Oregon state. I think they can pull the upset there. I think they can beat UCLA and, and get their fifth win. I don't like their chances at Colorado. And I really wanted to pick them against Utah. I did not in this case, but did pick them to, to win the territorial cup again, a six and six season. There's a lot of games that you can make an argument for. Like I could probably go eight wins if all went right and probably sure. like four if all if things went wrong. 
So somewhere between four and eight. So I'll, I'll land on six. What do you think? Yeah, I've, I've said a bunch of times and people who have listened, listen every week. Uh, first of all, thank you. But second of all, you're probably just getting tired of hearing it. I think Arizona will be better this season compared to last year. They're a more talented team, but their combined their schedule combined with the fact that I think the Pac-12 has collectively improved from last year makes me think that it might be another year before they get to a bowl game. Uh, they they look like they're in great shape on offense with a lot of returners. Although Jaden Delora did have a rough finish to last season, and that's still that's just keeps sticking in the back of my head. Uh, defense looks a lot different, which like ASU might not be a bad thing. There's a lot of youth and, and experience on that, on that side of the ball, though. And you combine that with games at USC, at Mississippi State, at Washington State, and even the Territorial Cup game in Tempe where Arizona hasn't won since 2011. I think getting to six wins is going to be tough. If I have to take the over or under, I'd go, I, I'd go with the over. I'd, I, I'd be optimistic and say six like you do. But my guess is that, again, Vegas is spot on by having them at five wins again this season. Let's find out what the head coach feels about everything. You listen to Shane and I break down the conference. What does Jed Fish think about his team's chances this year? You'll find out next here on Wildcat Country. What's up, Wildcat Country? It's Robbie G, baby. And I am gearing up for a big year with Coach Jed Fish and excited to see what the Arizona Wildcats do this football season. And just like the football team, we stepped up our program as well with the official licensed U of A ice shaker, baby. Check it out and get it at fanatics.com. Bear down, Arizona. Let's go. Shane, if we were to do a poll on campus of the most popular man at the University of Arizona, I have a pretty good idea of who would win, and it would be our head football coach, Jed Fish, who for the second time is making an appearance on Wildcat Country. First time in a couple of years, Coach. Glad to have you here. Uh, the last time we had you on, you hadn't coached a game yet, and a lot of things that are very good have happened since. So uh, among everything that you've done since 2021, what's your favorite thing that you've accomplished at Arizona thus far? Oh, I'd have to say I bring the Territorial Cup back home. Uh, that's been – we've had a lot of great wins in regards to recruiting, regards to going on the road opening day last year was a great win for the program. Having our first win um, after a long, long losing streak was a big win. Going to the Rose Bowl and winning. But the win, um, keeping players in the state of Arizona has been some wins. But uh, I would say the win to get the Territorial Cup back in Tucson has got to be the – the most fun we've had and the biggest win for the program so far. Yeah. I was actually going to ask you about that, Jeb, because, you know, I, and from we've talked about this in terms of impressive wins last year, the win at UCLA is probably number one, but just in terms of fan engagement or even re-engagement, I got to think uh, finishing the season with a win over ASU for the first time in six years is, is at the top. Have you gotten a sense that that win has really helped to ignite or even reignite the Arizona fan base in Tucson? Yeah, I think we're getting there um, for sure. I know that, you know, we have the most amount of season tickets that we've sold since 2014. I know that we're um, high on the most amount of Zona Zoo passes we've sold in the last 10 years. Um, still not where I want it. I want it to be, a, you know, an absolute sellout and make it a hard, the hardest ticket to get in town. Uh, we still need to continue to build off of that. I think if we start getting the bowl games and start figuring out ways to compete for championships, uh, that will come as well. But, um, you know... <laughs> I think in terms of the the, the community, um, when I see people out, the excitement around Arizona football uh, is at a high level right now. It's probably a lot higher than it was when I first got here, and um, that that makes it fun. And we've got some really good football players. I certainly know the the NFL scouts have been very active at our practices over the last few weeks, knowing the amount of players that we have that uh, we know will be drafted. And Eric and I will tell you when that stadium is sold out, it's as loud an atmosphere as any other place in the country. So hopefully we can get back to that soon. Uh, I know, I think most Wildcat fans would agree, Jed, you've used all the resources available to you in order to promote this program. Like whether when you have alumni like Rob Gronkowski making trips back to Tucson and you have Bill Belichick talking up the program and wearing U of A shorts during Patriots practice and everything in between. What kind of impact does all of that have in building or rebuilding the Arizona football brand? Well, I think the problem was the the brand was a little damaged. Uh, there wasn't a lot of love for Arizona football. There wasn't a lot of national attention. <laughs> and as strong of the of a brand as the Block A is, and uh, we saw that during conference realignment, how many people were waiting to see what Arizona was going to do. Um, we needed to reinvigorate the the crowd. 
We needed to reinvigorate the players. If, if the recruits are going to come here, you know, why are they going to come here, right? If you can't recruit well, you're not going to win, period. There's not doesn't matter. If you don't have good players, you're not going to win. And um, our goal was to get good players in here, and we had to do everything we can to convince those good players that they're not coming here for no reason. And they're going to feel an energy. They're going to feel a passion of the fan base. They're also going to have access to people that they've never dreamt of having access to. Uh, they're going to have opportunities to hear from, you know, numerous, numerous players and coaches um, from Matthew Slater to Cam Jordan to Rob Gronkowski to Teddy Bruschi through Bill Belichick and Pete Carroll and Sean McVay and Howie Roseman. So they're going to get all of it over the course of time. Um, you know, the last two Super Bowl contenders was Zach Taylor, was Zach Taylor and Sean McVay were both at practice last spring. So, you know, they're going to get that and they're going to be able to embrace that. And, and hopefully that's what's really reinvigorated everything. Boy, coach, your connections. I mean, we could play six degrees of Jed Fish. You probably know half the people in the NFL. Uh, pretty darn impressive. That's that's for sure. Uh, I want to ask about the move to the Big 12. Uh, you talked about recruiting. We know that you've crushed it in Juice County. Uh, obviously, seeing the players, um, you know, with, uh, you know, T-Mac and Noah. The and, Servite and guys. Come on. Yeah, yeah, the Servite guys. But now you're going to the Big 12. Uh, how do you expect that to impact your recruiting going forward? Well, <laughs> you know, the first thing is, uh, the most important state is Arizona. So can we continue to recruit Arizona at a very high level? My belief is the uh, the indications will all uh, say yes at that point in time. Uh, so if we could win the state of Arizona, if we could sign the best players from the state to join our program, then that's win number one when it comes to being able to, it doesn't matter what conference we're in. Second thing is I've never really recruited to a conference I've recruited to our program. So I have no issue going to Southern California and recruiting to Arizona, whether or not we're playing schools in Texas or we're playing schools in Washington, right? Um, the, you know, the challenge you have is not playing the LA schools um, because of maybe one home game a year would be in LA for parents. So, uh, but it's a lot better to play the Arizona schools and the Texas schools than have to go play on the East Coast. So I feel much better about what we can recruit to in Southern California than the Southern California schools can. And then, you know, on top of it, it does open up. Um, I recruited Florida my whole life. Anytime I've coached in college football, which is um, now approaching, I think, year nine in college football, year eight, maybe. And um with that, I feel like I have a lot of nice ties in Florida, and the fact that we can play UCF uh, might help. And then Texas uh, is, an, is a huge opportunity for us. We have four or five players from Texas. Mike Wiley's from Houston, um, probably one of the – not the best player on our team right now. So hopefully people from Houston will notice that, and they'll say, you know, why not us? And hopefully we'll join uh, that group as well. Hey, it makes a lot of sense. Texas used to be a big recruiting ground for Arizona, especially uh, Mike Stoops days. Uh, got a lot of good players out of there. So that's uh, encouraging to hear. So when it comes to this season, what would you define as a successful 2023? Um, I'd say, you know, as if we could play our best football every Saturday, we'll be successful. I, I always struggle with predicting wins and losses and struggle with, you know, if I said we were going to be 10 and 2, you'd say, who are the two? Right. Like, how do I tell her, hey, guys, I'm not counting on winning this game. If I say we're going to be seven and five, how do you know what are our players going to say? So I have no idea. I have no idea what we're going to do in terms of wins and losses. Um, we have a very, very strong commitment to win our home games. Uh, that's very important to us. Um, we believe that uh, we got to keep the Territorial Cup at home here in Tucson. That's very important to us. And then um, we feel like we have an opportunity to go out and play everybody on our schedule, very tough. And um, that's really where we're, where we're at, where our head is at. We got to stay healthy. Um, we don't, uh, our depth is very young. So we, we, you know, we play a lot of young players anyway, but our depth behind our, our team <laughs> is really young. So we have to make sure we stay on top of that and stay healthy throughout the season, uh, keep our quarterback upright. And um, if we can play with our quarterback for all 12, 13, 14, whatever amount of games we can, then we have a chance to uh, be real special. 
Jed, I want to revisit uh, recruiting here in state. And I know you can't talk about specific commits, but obviously you've had a lot of success there and your staff has. Can you just give us, without giving away all your secrets, just what's the sales pitch for guys who are getting offers from top SEC schools and Big Ten schools who play in Arizona? What's the sales pitch for keeping them in state and specifically going to Tucson? Yeah. Um, well, I think the first thing <laughs> is, um, you know, you look at historical data, right? And you just say, um, how many great running backs went to Texas? And we could like we could name 10, 15 of them, right? Heisman Trophy winners, et cetera. You know, maybe B. John Robinson would have been better suited being in Arizona, being the best player that's ever played here. Best running back that's ever gone to Arizona. Maybe that's an opportunity, right? So you could talk to certain players and remind them of, you know, where you retire. When you retire, what's that going to look like? Are you going to retire in Austin, Texas? Are you going to retire in Eugene, Oregon? Are you going to retire in, you know, South Bend, Indiana? Or are you going to retire back in where your family is, in the state of Arizona? If so, why would you not want to be the guy that brought Arizona back to prominence rather than the guy that continued to keep Notre Dame good or continued to keep Texas good? Like, I don't know why that's exciting you know, as a player, uh, in my mind, that that's not very exciting. Um, if I'm a recruit, I want to go to a place where when my career is over and I want to be in the state, um, that I know that I'm going to be the guy in the state that it, when I walk into the grocery store, they're going to say to me, Hey, weren't you the player that got a Rose bowl for Arizona? Or you weren't you the player that brought Arizona to the playoffs? And if the answer is yes, you're going to have a lot more juice then if someone walks up to you and says, hey, weren't you the guy that went 10 and three up in, uh, you know, Michigan or 11 and one in Michigan or, you know, yeah, sure. You, me and the other 25 great players that went there. So that's kind of what we tell them. We tell them that we're a, you know, we're a pro town um, in regards to there are no NFL teams here, but we're a college town for their experience. So if they want to be, you know, the big dogs, they want to be the top people in town. You know, here's your spot. If they want to be the guys that, um, you know, they got to share a billboard with Tyler Murray. Okay, go ahead. Larry Fitzgerald. Okay, go ahead. You know, they're going to much prefer to sell, you know, Kyler Murray than they are going to sell, you know, anyone else. Um, you go to L.A., you know, you've got LeBron. You've got Stafford. you got Brad Pitt. you got a lot of people you got to compete with there. You go to Tucson, not so much. So um, that's kind of where we look at it. And we believe that, that that's really the answer to our recruiting. All right, coach, I got two more for you. Uh, you, you and your family have been here or been in Tucson about two and a half years now after living a, uh, you know, the classic assistant coach, nomad life bouncing fr- around a lot. What do you and your family think of Tucson? Uh, just, uh, you know, obviously it is a great college town. We agree on that, but just your thoughts on, on Tucson overall in the community here. Yeah, we love it. My, uh, <laughs> One daughter that's at South Point, one daughter that's at uh, middle school and up in the uh, foothills, and um, they love it. I mean, they love the they love our team. I mean, they're like the the two mascots. I would say, you know, they're always here. The boys are always taking pictures with them. They're always they're funny. They they love the players. Um, the players have been amazing to our kids. Um, our kids love bringing their friends to the games and basketball games, softball games, baseball games, football games. It doesn't matter. Um, Amber loves it here. Uh, She's made a great group of friends. She's so involved in the community. Uh, She believes that this is, this is home for us. Uh, Whether or not we're, you know, she's doing a fundraiser at the Sands club or whether she's uh, volunteering at the homeless shelter or hanging out with her friends, um, you know, up up where we live. It's just a a very happy place for all of us. And uh, we love that part of it. I think we all appreciate Amber's BTFD hat as well. Uh, last question for you, for me, uh, for you, Coach. Uh, and I asked this the last time we had you on the program, which is before you coached a game at Arizona. And I want to just give you the opportunity again. Uh, for fans like us in the Phoenix area, just give us your best pitch, why they should take the trip to I-10, be in the stands for Arizona football this season, starting with NAU on September 2nd. Sure. Well, I always start with why not, right? I always start there. I'm like, if you are a fan of University of Arizona football, You've got six games, six home games that you can be at. And they play on, we play on Saturday. So there's not many conflicts. Uh, and we usually play at night. So there's really not many conflicts. So the opportunity to experience college football games at the highest level, 
the best games any of us have ever been to are the ones that have the most people. So it's kind of like the chicken or the egg deal, right? I want to have a great experience. Okay, well, how do you have a great experience? Well, I want to be at a place where it's sold out. Okay, well, how do I do that? Well, if Arizona's not going to sell it, I'm not going to go. Or you say, if I go, we will sell out. And if we if we sell out, the experience will be amazing. If the experience is amazing, I'm going to come back again. And so I think we're at that point right now. It's time to it is time to fill the seats. Um, it is time to lay it all out there for these next six games. This is our moment. Uh, we told our team this is our moment. Jordan Morgan, Jacob Cowling, Mike Wiley, Jaden Delora, Justin Flo, um, Tanner McLaughlin. You know, you've got CO and Manoa and so many good football players that are now on this football team that um, how would you not want to come watch them? That's a great point, Coach. I'll tell you this. I've been an 18-year season ticket holder. Uh, I drive two hours each way to the games. For the first time, I upgraded my tickets. Uh, maybe it's because I'm getting old and need a seat back. But uh, I'll tell you what. I believe in the program, what you've done, and it's been awesome. But from a, from a uh, fan's perspective, we know that you know the, we have this sellout and the, the Desert Fury 50K thing. What else would you like to see from our fans from a culture perspective, so to speak? Well, I would just say, you know, I think the most important thing we could do is support the kids, you know? So how do you support them, right? Is it is it ripping them or is it believing in them? Is it talking about the positives that will go on or is it trying to find something negative? Um, and, I, you know, we talk about that with our team. Uh, if you, Our team does everything we can um, to promote positive, to, to give back. Uh, we're very strict on what we put out on social media as a program because – uh, each player has to recognize that it starts with Arizona football player and then it ends with their name. So uh, I want our fans to support that as well and to come out and, and you know, go root on our kids and go be loud and proud and have energy and excitement and recognize that, trust me when I tell you, they are working their tails off every single day at practice and meetings and more practice and more meetings. Might as well go enjoy it. I love it, Coach. We we really appreciate that. All right, last question for you. We saw a video the other week of you with uh, serving tennis balls to uh, Jaden Delora and Noah Fafita. There's no way that they actually would have returned to serve if you had been trying, right? Oh, we just decided. I mean, we we. I think I made the deal, you know, pretty pretty tough on my end. My end was if they touched the ball with their racket and went over the net, they they win. So every serve had to have a little bit of a a spin or an angle to it. So it became a little bit tricky. But, uh, yeah, they each got one um, there at the end, and we were able – and they did a good job there. And uh, I think Noah might have gotten one over at practice, so we'll see what that looks like. But it was fun. It was a great – it was a great time. And watching their spirit um, – that's why you coach college football, watching the joy that, on their faces and how funny they are and – uh, those two, those two guys in particular are uh, are a treat. They're awesome, Coach. Really appreciate your enthusiasm for the program and what you've done. Uh, many uh, your continued success this season, and hopefully we get a chance to talk to you again down the road. Awesome, thanks, guys. Well, Shane, it was great to have Coach Fish on for the second time. It had been a couple of years since we last had him on. What did you take away most from uh, what he said with us? Well, and, and let's just, just to back up for a second. You know, we, we asked him some more, some broader questions about the about the program and the and the, tr- and the direction it's going. You know, if he's at practice, he's answering the same questions about positions and everything. So he wanted to ask some different overall questions. So if you're wondering about that, that's why we we, we uh, went down that route. Uh, Big takeaway is I remember I was thinking back to our first conversation with him. We had uh, two years ago before he coached a game at Arizona and he his message about coming out, fans coming out to support the team was the same. He said, um, I'm trying to remember exactly what he said. He said, well, fans might say, okay, if we win, we'll, we'll show up. How about if you show up, we'll win. You know, he talked about that, the chicken and the egg thing. And, and I agree, you know, it, it, it you're more likely to win if you have more fans uh, cheering and, and it's an intimidating environment. 
Arizona football fans just aren't like that. They're they're And I think Jed realizes that and he's doing everything he can to get fans to show up. But the number one thing he can do is win and, and he's getting there. And that's why I think like we talked about with Jed as well, that win over ASU was just the, was the biggest win of the season in terms of fan support. And if you do see a rise in, in attendance this season, which it sounds like you will, like Jed said, the, their season ticket sales are up. Uh, I think that win is going to have a lot to do with it. Yeah. And you know what I appreciated most about what coach said was, the importance of beating ASU. He gets mm-hmm. it. Oh, yeah. And I, I don't think we've had a coach that really has understood that chain since well, Dick Tomey. Well, you remember his tweet uh, from the, the, yeah. the Pac-12 tournament yeah. back to normal? Perfect double entendre. He yeah. gets it. Yep. I mean, Rich uh, uh, Sumlin didn't care. Rich Rod didn't really get it. He was never really he a He grasped guy. it toward later in his time. He started. He eventually started talking about calling him the school up north and all that. But I think it took him a little. It took him a couple losses to finally embrace the importance of that game. And, and Mike Stoops. I mean, he, I know he won his first Territorial Cup game against ASU in that 2004 upset. But I don't think he ever really. I mean, yeah. you know, you don't kick extra points against ASU. You go for two and you go for the win. And Stoops yeah. played too conservatively. And we're talking about 2010. Yeah. But that's all I have to say about that. But I think Jed has realized the best way to ingratiate himself for the fans. I mean, obviously winning is number one, but one A is, is, is talk smack about ASU and do it in a way where, you know, it's not like you're going to make headlines, but you're, you're kind of, you ingratiate yourself to fans and you let them know, okay, I get it. I know how important it is to, to win this cup and to keep it. You know, and we talked last week, one of the buyer sell questions was about a sellout. When will Arizona have a sellout? And mm. I said, I would kind of tease that and give the answer on this week's show. So I think Arizona will sell out the September 30th game against Washington. At this point, if the Wildcats are three and one or four and zero with an upset at Mississippi State and a win at Sanford, people are going to show up. And I still think even three and one, uh, if Arizona can win that game, they would be ranked. I, I, I think four and one heading into USC. I think Arizona would be a ranked team at that point. Can you picture a world where Arizona's three and zero, Washington's undefeated, and and College Game Day comes to Tucson again? Uh, you know what? If so, let's go. Let's we'll, yeah. we'll be there. Although I, I have mixed feelings about that because Arizona's like zero and two when game day comes to Tucson. They, they are, but, but yeah, still. I mean that that's but still. All right. So for the next thirteen weeks, Shane and I are going to make picks in this segment. We're going to try to have a special guest on every week with us to make picks. Uh, there are some week zero games we are not going to pick them. I'm sorry, but uh, San Jose State plus thirty one. Well, I like the pick. We're not making it official uh, on this program at USC. Uh, so Shane, just if you were to give a lean on San Jose State getting 31 against USC, this does not count for the season. Good, good. I take you, USC all day. I think. Oh no, good. I think I think this is backdoor cover. You and think so? so? We, oh yeah, I think San, uh, Caleb Williams comes out at the end of the third quarter, yeah. and San Jose State gets a couple of touchdowns in the fourth quarter, and backdoors that plus 31 for us. Okay. So that's your that's your one. But also another interesting game. Uh, circle this one on the on the calendar. Jacksonville State. Which Rich is, Rod. Rich Rod is playing their first uh, uh, game in Conference USA, which is their in, in FBS. They're transitioning. And they host UTEP, who Arizona plays, in three mm, weeks. Interesting. So, and it's it's basically a pick em game. So if you're going to just watch a game that's a little bit under the radar, that's one I would recommend keeping an eye on. I like it. The little but scouting. I, so we're not going to make picks this week, but I have three things I want to run by you, Shane. Yep. So – Brett McMurphy from uh, Action Network tweeted this uh, on Monday that Memphis has a ticket promotion where fans can buy a $60 ticket for their opener against Bethune-Cookman. If they win, fans get a free ticket to the next home game, and this continues for each home game until Memphis loses at home. This is basketball we're talking about. This is football. This is football? This is Bethune-Cookman and football? They play Bethune-Cookman and football. That's the SWAC. And then they get Navy, Boise State, Tulane, USF and SMU. Okay. If Arizona, would you, would you ever, if you were in the marketing department at Arizona, would you ever run a promotion like this? Uh, probably not. I, I would make it a much more limited of anything. First of all, that you want the obvious risk of just becoming a laughing stock. If, if you do something like that, uh, everyone pointing fingers. They're not losing the, the Bethune Cookman and Arizona's not losing to NAU. Well, I, no, 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 no. I'm just saying that having to do that promotion to get fans to show up, especially when you're starting, when you're on an upward tra- uh, trajectory, you're starting to win games. I, I think I could see something like where if Arizona, they did the promotion where, look, if you buy a ticket to see NAU and they win, which they will, you you get a free ticket to the next game, to the to the uh, the UTIP game. But that's it. I wouldn't go beyond that because things can get tricky. And like and if you're a season ticket holder like, like you are, Eric, it's like, OK, where, where's my free ticket? But right? here's what you do, Shane. 
in my opinion. I think this is a brilliant promotion, and I would run this if I was Arizona. Because you have that whole third deck on, I believe it's the east side of the stadium, where, I mean, it's it's generally hot up there. It's really high up. I mean, that is nosebleed section. I, I don't believe I have ever sat up in that particular area for a game of all the games I've been to at Arizona Stadium. Mm. That's You do it for those those seats up there. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. I, you th- I think, you think fans should... are going to take those seats. Oh, think I think gonna, I, think they're going to come, come back for yep. a game for. Okay. I, what I would say is, uh, you know, if you block off a specific section or whatnot and said, all right, you can buy this first ticket for 60 bucks. And if you win, if you get it right, or if Arizona wins, you get the next one for free. And then if they went and I would do it just in those sections, it's really easy. Assuming that nobody is bought in those particular sections for the year. Who knows if that's the case. I love this promotion, and I think Arizona should consider it. No, I I, I think they get I, I think they just get laughed at for it, and I don't think the attendance would would improve that much. So I I don't know I I understand the logic behind it, but I feel like if you have to, and you want a sold out crowd because you want fans who are, want to be there to make a bunch of noise, and I think if you're just there because you got a free ticket and it's kind of a whatever thing, I don't know if it's going to make that much of a difference anyway. So. I again, if they want to do it for NAU one game, you come back and see the next game. That's fine, but I wouldn't go beyond that. And I and look, Arizona doesn't. If Arizona wins some damn football games, that stadium will sell out. We've seen it, so they don't need to go that route. If Arizona, you know, wins their first three or four games of the season, which isn't likely, but if they did, you're going to see a sellout about halfway through the season. At some point, by the way, they got to do something about that third deck. I'm not going to rail on it; just too high up, as far as I'm concerned. It's Arizona Stadium is not big enough. You know they should have. Well, they have they to have a place re- to put the the visiting band, isn't that where they sit? They, it, it 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 is these days. Otherwise, they would do it on the far west side, on you yeah. know by the by the locker room over there. As far as I'm concerned, though, I think at some point down the road, Arizona needs to try to replicate what you see on the west side, on the east side, where it's just one set straight up, kind of on a diagonal instead of having that. And I don't know how many millions of dollars that would cost. Probably not in the athletic department budget. But if I had a bunch of money and I wanted to donate it, that's one thing I'd say, you got to get rid of that upper deck because nobody wants to sit up there. And getting up there, you might as well get all your exercise in there for the day. Just put well, when, when you get your big national TV gig and, and the money comes yes. in, then, then you can, then you not, can work on Not it. coming in that much. Let me tell not you with that. that attitude. Number two, Shane, Kansas State and Arizona are scheduled to play a, uh, a college football game, non-conference game, next September. Problem is they're going to be conference foes. So Kansas State's like, well, we don't have anybody else that can replace Arizona. Will the Wildcats, or well, it's Wildcats versus Wildcats, mm. will Arizona uh, treat this as a non-conference game? If you were Dave Hickey, would you keep the game or would you bow out of it? Well, first of all, I'm going to make a bold prediction. I will predict that the Wildcats are going to win that game. Thank you. I, I got, you gave me the exact reaction that I knew you were going to. Uh, okay. So no, I wouldn't bow out of it. I, I would first see if there's a way just to make it a conference game. I mean, I know it's early in the season, but sometimes you get that even in the Pac-12. Sometimes teams play week one or week two. Um, is it like it's like USC and Stanford? They've done that in the past where you get an early conference game, a couple of non-conference games. I don't see the, the need to, to change it up. Just incorporate Arizona and K-State into the uh, into the conference schedules. But I, I would like to keep it. It's a, it's a quality opponent. Uh, I don't think there's any need to, to switch it around this late. I would actually get rid of it. I would not have if if you're going to play nine conference games, mm. Kansas State would not be the tenth. I'm sorry, but especially a road game. If I'm Arizona, I'm bowing out. I'll schedule. You know, we we talk about weak non-conference schedules. I get it, but I think 2024 is an opportunity for Arizona to go really big, like ten win big next year. I really mm. do. And you know what? If you're going to play a softer schedule, that's fine. You're still going to have a tough, you know, road. And and who knows how it's going to shake out? We know how. Arizona in in even years has played uh, more home games in the in the Pac-12 than road games. We don't know if it's going to be the same way in the Big 12. Mm. So for me, I'm getting rid of that game. I'm finding a replacement. I know it goes this goes against what I said, uh, mm. you know, before beforehand about weakening your non-conference schedule. You know, mm. I'm calling somebody in the Big Ten. Hey, is anybody you know Rutgers? You available? Uh, you know, Maryland, you available Rutgers. Northwestern. I mean, I, I'm just saying, you know, at least it would be a power five. Look, I'd like a power five team, but I would not want a team in my own conference to play that game. I don't like it. And I hope Arizona backs out of it. No, May fine. disagree. All right. Uh, last topic on the show. We've talked all football, but I'm going to throw a little basketball at you. Shane, do you like this? The uh, 
2024 battle for Atlantis is set. Oh, and yeah. here are the teams that is, are in it with Arizona, Gonzaga, Indiana, Louisville, Creighton, West Virginia, Oklahoma, and Davidson. Normally I'd say fantastic, but we all remember the last time Arizona played at the battle for Atlantis. Mm. It was not good. In fact, uh, it was 0-3. 0-3 with the Andre, with the Andre Aitens team before they, they started, they started to piece things together, but yeah, that was, that was a horrible time. The, like that month or two when Arizona was out of the top 25 and ASU was like number three and yeah. just like hell froze over. And fortunately yeah. things balanced out and, uh, later in, in the year but yeah no i i'm not concerned about that and so I'm, I'm sure tommy lloyd and mark few aren't thrilled with the prospect of playing each other um but it it, it it would have to go a certain way so we don't know that's going to happen unless it's the automatic um first round matchup which i wouldn't be surprised at. well it, but, it probably wouldn't be but, but shane i mean you look at this schedule yeah if for arizona now next year no, I know you're afraid of tough competition. I was already afraid of it beforehand. I know you you're are. now going to have a home game against Duke. You're going to be out Wisconsin. You get Alabama, on, uh, you know, basically on the road. You're going to get produced in Vegas or something like that. Uh, I mean, this is a and then this. E- Eric, I mean, Tommy, Eric, it's whoa. going. To, it's going to be OK. It's OK if they play tough teams. You can still make the NCAA tournament if you play tough teams, especially if you beat some of them. I, and and Arizona, I'm not it, saying you want to you want to play with the big boys, then play with the big boys. And and I think that the more I I will say it again, and I still believe it, that the the tougher teams you play, the the tougher the schedule in the regular season, the more you're prepared for the NCAA tournament. And so any I'll tell you what now, and you combine that non conference schedule with with conference play in the Big Twelve. Arizona's strength of schedule is going to be number one. So they could lose like 10 games and still be like a two or a three seed because that strength of schedule is going to be up there. Somewhere, Lou Dolson is smiling Mm -hmm. at this schedule that Tommy Lloyd put. And Sean Miller's grimacing because he He never like. Yeah, yeah. Sean Miller would hate this. Mm -hmm. But good. Sean Miller's with you on this. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, everybody I've talked to about this has said I was wrong. And it's rare that everybody says I'm wrong. You know why they say you're wrong? Because you're wrong. Just so you know. Thanks to Coach Jed Fish for joining us. I mean, <laughs> seriously, how cool is that to get to get Coach Fish on uh, less than two weeks before the college football season? Just uh, what a thrill, and it's a great interview. And you can see why we're all excited about this team. His enthusiasm is extreme, and it, it's contagious. And uh, hop on board because it's going to be a fun ride. I really think so. A, a bowl game would be a win for us. If we're talking about Arizona playing a game in mid to late December, that is a winning season as far as I'm concerned, literally and figuratively. So for Shane Dale, I'm Eric Cohen. We're one week away from the big stuff. Thanks for listening to Wildcat Country. And as always, bear down. Bear down.